welcome to Raising Vibrations uh, with myself, Simon. Um, today, guys, I'm going to be bringing you something really, really interesting uh, from the point of view of um, this channel. <laughs> uh, basically, what I'm going to be sharing with you guys is um, a little description of the nature of all this 12 astrology signs, okay, from an evolutionary point of view. And so my intention over here is to do the following. There is a lot of astrology uh, on the YouTube at this point in time. There's many um, sort of like forecasts, uh, astrologers doing forecasts for you guys. There's many um, astrologers that just chat about the nature of the signs, etc., etc. And so what I would want to do in this video is um, share with you the kind of nature in which the archetypes work from an evolutionary point of view. In other words, what they actually symbolize in the chart in terms of the human condition. And hopefully from that experience, be able to orientate your awareness about or how you intuit your own signs when you are watching these forecasts so that you don't take the generalizations that are happening um, in the forecasts, but actually understanding it, how it is in for you, you know, how you are actually able to connect back to yourself, because ultimately that's the point over here, you know. There is a very, very big distortion at this point in time relative to our psychology that is inherently very subconscious and embedded in our or in our matrix of our reality. And part of raising vibrations over here is to try and break that fragmentation, is to try and integrate the truth behind the journey on Earth at this point in time, which is linked with the idea of inward reflection. Okay becoming closer to the idea of God, becoming closer to the idea of source energy, becoming closer to the idea of the creator, which inherently is you. You see, you're experiencing yourself on earth at this point in time in a physical reality. That's how you perceive reality and your senses and such. And so through that experience, there is a very sort of down, down awareness of reality and a limitation. And yet nothing in our history, nothing in our um, sort of teachings um, allows us to become aware that there are more dimensions to this experience here as a human being than, than has been told. And so it's that shifting that awareness from recognizing that one physical plane that exists within our lives is, this, is the physical reality. It's motion. It's Saturn. And yet there are other dimensions that do exist. There is the higher mind, which is linked to Uranus. Okay, there is the spiritual aspect, in other words, your higher self, as it were, Neptune, and of course, Pluto representing the nature of the soul in this particular conversation. There are these dimensions that exist, but that when we all integrate themselves into us and we accept all of these dimensions within us, we can be truly aligned with the nature of who we are. And so the purpose of this conversation and this channel, again, is to share with you that Ultimately, when you're looking at your astrology signs, it's really important to recognize that you're returning back to yourself through searching for who you are in this dualism of life. In other words, that the projection outwardly of in yourself is inherently a reflection inwardly of who you are. These symbols and zodiac itself is essentially a mirror that's reflecting inwardly who you are. So when you're looking at your, your signs, your astrology, and you're trying to figure out what it means, you've got to shift your sense of awareness inwardly within yourself to recognize that you're trying to find out who you are, trying to reconnect with who you are. So for instance, if you're moon in Scorpio and your sun signs in Aquarius, there are aspects of yourself that will be linked to those constellations. But then you, then you take it one step further by asking yourself, why do I have moon in Scorpio? What is my reality drawing in that is teaching me Scorpio lessons? Or what am I teaching people Scorpio lessons, etc.? And it's through that experience that you shift your awareness inwardly within yourself to alter and change who you are and you progress evolutionary. Okay. So from the point of view of this conversation, again, the 12 astrological signs. Okay. So when we're looking at the nature of Aries, okay, Aries exemplifies and, and it shows us the nature of something that has just begun. Okay. The new beginnings. So we don't need to look very far in life to understand and reflect what new beginnings represent. It's a cardinal energy. So therefore we are looking at something that's got a lot of energy in it, a lot of boost. Okay. A lot of excitement, a lot of rushing, a lot of direction orientation, because inherently we are beginning something new and it's filled with a lot of energy. 
So if you are sun signs in Aries, for instance, or moon signs in Aries, you've got a rising ascendance, etc. This is how you inwardly, within yourself, okay, connect to the new beginnings. In other words, how new beginnings exist for you, how you relate to a new beginning on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. So your rising sign actually reflects that. Your Mars in your chart reflects that. Your the sun in Aries, for instance, or the moon in Aries will, will reflect that, that there is a new evolutionary cycle that is beginning here. If you have Pluto in the first house, for instance, if you've got Uranus in the first house, there's a new evolutionary um, cycle beginning here. And so part of that process is about behaving instinctually. And there will be a natural instinctual reaction to the situation because it is the cycle of instinctual reaction, in other words, touching something without thinking that leads you to the awareness of the environment that then reflects back on you something you didn't know inherently. So this is how we become awake to ourselves through these inherent experiences where we act instinctually. We learn more about who we are. So again, Aries relates to how we are learning and becoming aware of the self and what your desires are as well at the same time, how you're actioning yourself relative to who you are because it creates your reality. Your reality becomes a reflection inwardly of you. So Aries relates to that, okay? Taurus is the next sign in the zodiac, and it symbolizes the nature of returning back inwardly to within ourselves, okay? So it's an inherent, it's a, it's a yin energy. So everything's coming back within. And it relates to the nature of survival, okay? Inherently within us, there is a need to survive the world that we're living in. So we have burst into this new existence, you know, wanting to explore the nature of who we are. And yet at the same time, we recognize that the body itself requires food, it requires water, it requires shelter, etc. And so therefore, we have this instinctual reaction towards surviving, which then defines our needs, because we are essentially going, okay, we need this, I need this, I need that. So therefore, I observe my resources around me, and as we reserve the resources around us, we start to gather, bring into the surf, into the center again, these needs. And it becomes our value systems. So Taurus is linked with the nature of value systems. So if your sun signs in Taurus, for instance, you're looking at the nature of, of, of survival and how you gather resources and how it's linked with those things. Gemini then comes along and it shares with us the nature of how we are able to articulate some things through the left brain, well, in this particular instance, I put it to the right, but yeah, <laughs> the left brain. And so when we're looking at the nature of Gemini in an astrology chart, so if you've got symbols in there, or your sun's there, or your moon's there, it's like it's looking at the nature of how we gather information, fact, opinion, how we relate those opinions and facts, okay, communicating in that sense. And so we use words that define the phenomena of reality in itself, because if we never had words, we would just intuitively send things to each other. But at the same time, we would not be able to describe things around us. And so when we give things names, we are then able to create a sense of security that we are defining ourselves through that experience. So when you're looking at Gemini and your sun signs, you're looking at how you are inwardly identifying. You're learning how to communicate. You're learning how to gather facts and information. You're learning about the nature of, of reality through words, etc. And this is why writing would be a great example, because you're objectifying your nature of reality. You have cancer. Now, the next sign that comes along is, is that inherently within cancer, the archetype is teaching us how to create protection through nurturing. And it is simple and it is very much uh, symbolized through the connection between the first house or Aries and cancer. Cancer inherently is an insecure sign. And the reason why this is the case is because of that square between Aries and, and uh, cancer, because as you are separate or separated from source energy in itself. And as soon as you separate from the womb, there is inherent insecurity that exists within your reality because it is unknown. And so therefore it leads the psychological uh, needs for protection and nurturing. And so this is the reason as to why cancer will correlate the nature of needing to protect, the needing to create security because there's an inherent need to remove the insecurity that exists, okay? Leo will come along and Leo will take, um, and of course, sorry, I wanted to say that cancer also correlates specifically to the nature of the subconscious or the conscious ego, because it's as we consciously create 
things within our lives, we create a series of events that allows us to feel secure relative to the past because we link our security to the past because we know that it has existed. We know that it has come. And so therefore the ego identity is actually reflected in the nature of the cancer of the fourth house and the moon. So your conscious ego identity, how you inwardly see yourself. Leo comes along relative to the beginning of Aries and Leo in itself reflects simply the nature of creative self-actualization. In other words, to add light to the process that originally started at Aries, which was this new destiny, this new desire that I have. And so we have created an ego in Cancer. We can communicate at Gemini. We know our needs and values, Taurus. We have our destiny, Aries. And so therefore now we've got to put it into practice. We've got to make it exist. We've got to attract the attention. And so Leo correlates to two dynamics, the need to attract attention. Yet at the same time, simultaneously, because of the need for attention, it requires feedback in order to say, hey, I'm doing this the right way, which leads Leos to actually inherently having a sense of insecurity relative to needing feedback to reflect back in on itself that it's doing what it needs to be doing. Leo will then correlate to the nature of ego through that experience because it will, in a sense, cover up its nature of security relative to the loudness that it has. You see, when Leos are inherently secure, they don't need to create a bold, loud noise they just radiate complete and utter harmony and pure love and vibrance and creativity. Virgo comes along, and this is what's considered to be a transition point within the 12 astrological signs, and it symbolizes the nature of turning, of taking our creative self-image, our subjective self, that we have placed on the top of the pyramid, and we're flipping it the other way around so that we can, in a sense, become aware of a larger force that exists beyond ourselves. In other words, the nature of creation, the nature of exactly the nature of creation in itself and that we are human beings on earth experiencing it, and yet we are indefinitely not superior to it. And so Virgo reflects to us how we can observe the nature of creation through its enormity. And it allows us to humiliate that ego in that sense to realign ourselves with something that is higher than ourselves. In Libra, comes along and inherently within Libra, because it's an air sign, is the nature of how we then relate to each other and ourselves. Okay. And so relation is directly linked to the nature of Libra. So if you've got all these signs in Libra, you're looking at how you are inwardly trying to create balance relative to extremes. In fact, Libra inherently is extreme energy and it's the process of becoming balanced and harmonious. Do we then understand what Libra represents? So it is the process of making deals and sh sh uh, um, sharing your needs with other people that then inwardly reflects who you are relative to the needs. So the people that you brought into your life will be the ones that you that will need something that you will that you will be inherently seeking within yourself. So Libra correlates to projection as well because you're projecting your needs onto another person. Now because there's a natural square between Libra and Cancer. Remember, cancer insecurity, there's an inherent security, insecurity that we project into others, that when we project these securities into other people and they get taken away from us, we inherently feel lost without them. So again, it teaches you back in on yourself to recognize that true security can only come from within. And that when you're in relationships, you're sharing your needs with other people relative to what you are actualizing yourself. And they can facilitate those needs by being in a relationship with you relative to fairness. And that's how we create the Libra balance. Scorpio comes along and says, okay, guys, uh, now that you've created friendship and, and all of this type of stuff, because I'm the polarity of Taurus, which correlates to survival, I need to recognize that survival comes from procreation with another. And so it's the merging of two people in itself that correlates to Scorpio. And so therefore, it's the binding of death, the beginning of life, and also the end of it, in that sense, the bottom line, as it were, and the Plutonian experience. So Pluto in itself actually, or pardon me, Scorpio in itself is actually the way in which we experience the realignment of the soul through loss, abandonment, and betrayal. In fact, the reason as to why the soul in itself will experience loss, abandonment, and betrayal is because it extends its trust, its, its experience, its attachments outside of itself. And when they get taken away from it, it then inherently feels lost, betrayed, and abandoned through those experiences. That, in, that then forces an inward alignment within itself that recognizes that true source energy exists within. 
Sagittarius comes along and says, okay, now we've merged, we've created all these type of things, and yet I need a philosophy in order to orientate myself around the world. So you can sit in the middle of, of um, the world and go, like, I have no idea where I am. So you create a philosophy that is directly linked with the nature of who you are. How you inwardly experience your life becomes your philosophy, then directs you in a direction in which you need to go in. And that is why Sagittarius will relates to searching for the truth relative to the initial idea that truth exists in Scorpio. So Sagittarius, so if you've got Pluto in the ninth house, if you've only got Sag archetype in your chart, it correlates to that reflection of inwardly searching for something and developing your sense of philosophy so that you can find out where you belong within the cosmos. So the sense of orientation There's a natural square between Sagittarius and Pisces, which teaches us that the totality of creation itself is so beyond our comprehension relative to the mind that we need a truth inwardly within ourselves to recognize where we are, but relative to where time space exists. Capricorn comes along and of course, at the end of the day, in order for us to actually experience the things in form and the things in, in the physical reality and manifestation, things need to crystallize. And so therefore Capricorn will relate to the nature of crystallization. And it is the integration of our philosophy that we allow for the rules, regulations and laws to exist within a, a structure that is crystallized. So example can be like a country, for instance, has a specific philosophy. And that philosophy is then what defines the nature of the structure of the reality itself. Um, Capricorn will also relate to the nature of emotional maturity relative to reflection within. Because when you are experiencing Capricorn energy, there are essentially limitations. And it's that limitations that inwardly turn us in on ourselves. And we need to reflect who we are. It's a cardinal sign. And so blocks and depression are linked with the nature of Capricorn energy in our charts. Because inherently there is a blockage that we are unable to pass through or break through. And so therefore when we inwardly reflect on ourselves, we can understand the nature of what's going on. And as we change within, we change the direction, which then alleviates the block. So between the ages of 28 and 30, you would probably experience your Saturn returns as being the blockages because the soul inherently is learning to change its path. We have Aquarius, for instance, and of course, the very nature of Aquarius in itself is to say, hey, by the way, guys, we formed this kind of construction or this reality, yet at the same time, it can't facilitate evolution always. So we need to break that form. And so Uranus comes along and challenges the status quo, challenges the form, challenges the, the nature of how it is and innovates it through shattering of it and allowing for a speeding up and acceleration, as it were. So if you've got Pluto in the 11th house, for instance, or if you've got Pluto transiting your 11th house, or if you've got any planets touching your, your Uranus in your chart, you're looking at the nature of how you're accelerating the nature of your consciousness in your chart relative to the breaking of pre-existing patterns that have existed. So if you have moon conjunct um, Uranus, you're looking at the acceleration of the self-image relative to an image that might have been crystallized in your consciousness and how you've identified yourself needs to change. So you'll be challenged a lot with relative to your, to your image because there is an acceleration of your image. In that sense, if you've got uh, Pluto, if you've got Uranus conjunct your Mars, for instance, there'll be an acceleration of your desires and such and how you act upon those things. And what we have here, the final sign within the zodiac correlates specifically to Pisces. And again, Pisces represents that symbolic representation of how you're learning to surrender to the nature of creation in itself, to surrender to the nature of who you are and what it is that is here, and to go with the flow and to be completely in the moment and sensitive to everything, to feel the impulses and web and flow that exist within creation in itself. And it is that experience. Um, so if you've got any planets in Pisces or if you've got that Neptunian experience in your chart, for instance, all these symbolize the nature of how you connect to something that is beyond the dimensions of reality here and the learning of surrendering to the process. Okay, guys, so I've gone through all the astrology all signs over there. I hope my introduction kind of cleared the idea of why I did this video. Um, I really hope that it did help, for instance. Um, if you've got any more questions, you know, just uh, write in the comments below, guys. Um, I like uh, responding to some of you, to, to the comments over there. I'm always interested in, in helping people become more deeply aware of the nature of the astrology signs and how they are reflected in our lives. 
Um, of course, it's uh, part of Racing Vibrations. <laughs> Fantastic, guys. Well, um, first, I'd like to let you know, come over to my website, simonforce.com, just afterwards. Um, check out the services that I do have. Uh, book a reading with myself. Um, I'm always um, loving uh, to guide uh, souls along their process. Um, so send me an email and book a time with me. Um, I'm always available for people that are living in America and Australia, etc. And um, yeah, check out some of the other stuff that I have on my website. Um, at the moment, I'm busy uh, setting up uh, Pluto webinar, and of course, the questions and answers um, uh, uh, webinar as well. So those are two fun, uh, exciting things at this point in time. So check out my website for that uh, information and be part of the webinar itself um, and uh, allow me to teach more about the nature of spirituality and astrology and how they are linked together. But other than that, guys, uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, share the video, uh, check out more of the stuff. Um, and again, make sure to, to book a reading with myself, of course, or a guidance session, however you'd like to see it. If you're interested in learning astrology itself, um, I've created an online astrology school, which has um, over like 11 hours worth of content over there that's basically taken a whole universe of astrology and simplified it so that you can understand it. And there's a really, really... It's done in a very clear and precise way and a simple way in that sense. So even if you're new to astrology, this is designed completely for you. Okay, so be sure to check that out. Other than that, guys, have a fantastic evening and I will see you again. Bye.